The Houston Astros have been one of the most unexpected surprises of the 2024 regular season. And I don't mean that in a good way unless you can't stand the Astros. And there are lots and lots and lots of people who can't stand the Astros. Even though the cheating scandal was way back in 2017, which was almost 10 years ago, a lot of people still hold up a lot of animosity towards the Astros. So maybe what I should have said was the Houston Astros have been one of the most disappointing teams in terms of performance in baseball in the first couple months of 2024. And it is just extra disappointing considering how successful of team they have been over the last seven years they have been to the alcs in seven straight years winning the world series twice one of those may or may not be legit and it is understandable if you think it's not i'm certainly not going to tell you how to feel but regardless it happened and they have the accolades and these are the type of accolades that would result in the word dynasty being thrown around about the astros so it was a bit of a surprise to see how fast and how far they fell off at the beginning of 2024 to open the season they got swept in a four-game series by the new york yankees but you know it's a long season and losing four straight is probably going to happen to the best teams in baseball over the course of a season however fast forward to april 25th the astros would have a 7 and 19 record after getting swept by the chicago cubs you know that old saying that you can't win the world series in april but you can lose it that's kind of where we were and i think it was evident at this point that this may be a different houston astros team that we have come to know over the last seven years or so one of the big problems for houston up to this point had been pitching their pitching as a whole was 26th in baseball and war 28th in era just above the chicago white sox and the Colorado Rockies. Now that's not a place where you want to be. You know Colorado's never had a good time pitching with the elevation. And the White Sox? Well, they're just straight up awful. Horrendous. However, I don't think that this can come to a surprise to a lot of people due to how many injuries that the Houston Astros have dealt with, especially to that starting rotation of theirs. They're basically missing most of their rotation at the start of their season. Justin Verlander was starting the season on the IL, and plus he's 41 years old. You just can't really expect the Verlander from 2019 to show up in 2024. Jose Arquiti start of the season on the injured list and he would go on to have Tommy John surgery in early June. So he's done for the year without throwing a single pitch. Luis Garcia had the same situation. At the start of the season, he was on the injured list and he would go on to have Tommy John surgery himself in May. And Lance McCullers Jr. to no surprise to anyone in the world started this season on the injured list as well. I'm not even sure Lance McCullers even exists anymore if I'm being honest. I feel like he's sort of like the Loch Ness Monster. You may get a glimpse of him from time to time, but are you sure it was really him that you saw? And that's just before the year started. After a couple of decent months from Christian Javier, he ended up going down and needing Tommy John surgery as well. So the rotation has been all over the place, and their best starting pitcher has been Ronel Blanco, who barely even made the opening day starting rotation. That's how rough the Astros have had it. And their bullpen had also been pretty rough up to this point, especially the back end of that bullpen, which we thought was going to be one of the best, if not the best in baseball. Brian Abreu had been struggling. He had a 497 ERA and a 718 FIP up to this point. Ryan Presley had a 745 ERA and Josh Hader, their newly acquired closer from free agency, signing that mega deal, had been awful to this point with an 8.38 ERA. However, it looks like Presley and Hader were running into a bit of bad luck, or should I say a lot of bad luck, with both of their FIPs below 3 up to this point compared to their high ERAs. And up to this point, their offense wasn't really a problem. They were 13th in war, they were 10th in WRC+, and they were 9th in OPS. And this is all while Alex Bregman had a horrendous start, and Jose Abreu was putting up numbers similar to when pitch were still hitting in the National League. So imagine every time Jose Abreu came up to bat that it was just John Smoltz instead. Except John Smoltz would have been an improvement over Jose Abreu this season. So it's evident that their pitching was the main factor into giving them their horrendous start. But fast forward to June 18th. The Astros would open up a series against the Chicago White Sox and get shut out and lose 2 to nothing. This would make the Astros 33-40. and 40. And after that loss, they are now 10 games behind the Mariners who were 44-31 and 31 at the time. And it seemed like the Mariners were starting to separate themselves from the rest of the American League East. And could this be the time where the Astros were cooked, done, finished? It was kind of looking like it, but it turns out you can't put the Astros into the ground just yet because they would go on a heater and win seven straight games. This would narrow the Mariners' lead in the AOS to only four and a half games. After the seven-game winning streaks, the Astros would go on to win six out of the next nine games and get their record of 46 and 43. And now they're only two games behind the Mariners after July 6th. This surgence has a lot to do with their pitching performances from their starting rotation as well. Since June, 18th, which was the day before the start of their seven game winning streak, the Astros are second in baseball in ERA. They've gotten some really good performances out of Framber Valdez, Hunter Brown, and Ronel Blanco. Hunter Brown has only allowed one earned run in his last 18 innings. Valdez has been solid with a 3 4 2 ERA in his last four starts. And Ronel Blanco has a sub 3 ERA over the last three starts of his as well. Hunter Brown had also been one of the worst starting pitchers in baseball up until early May. His ERA ballooned up to 889 after his start on May 5th. But after his last start on July, 
by six, his ERA has been lowered to 448. Now, 448 is not an incredible ERA, but that's an incredible improvement over such a short period of time. And although the Astros ERA has been second in baseball over that span, the underlying metrics suggest that they've been getting pretty lucky. They are 17th in baseball in FIP and 19th in baseball in XFIP. So they've been outperforming the peripherals for a little bit, but they've gotten the results to get them back into the race. And their offense over that span has been fantastic. They are third in all of baseball in war. They are fourth in baseball in WRC plus, and they are fourth in baseball in OPS. And this has been without Kyle Tucker, who's been one of the top players in baseball this year. And if it wasn't for Aaron Judge, we'd be talking about Kyle Tucker having an MVP type of campaign. So once he comes back, their offense could be even stronger. Plus, your Don is starting to hit as well. His OPS is starting to get above 900. Altuve's had a pretty solid season, and Jeremy Pena is having a much better year than he had last year. Alex Bregman is also starting to come around. His OPS is finally above 700 after his horrendous start to the season. And I think the biggest upgrade they had in the middle of the year was cutting ties with Jose Abreu. John Singleton has stepped in and taken over first base for them. And although he only has an OPS plus of 101, that is a major, major improvement over Jose Abreu, who had an OPS plus of three. Yes, three single digits. One, two, three. I promise you, your ears are working just fine. And it's surprising that the Astros have made up this ground so quickly. I just recently made a video about the Seattle Mariners a couple weeks ago and how they needed to make some moves if they wanted to get to the next level. They had the chance to step on the throats of the Houston Astros, but they have not capitalized over this span. They went from being 44 and 31, 13 games above 500, to 49 and 42, only seven games above 500. And it looks like they missed their opportunity. They have made a big mistake of letting the Astros get back into the AL West race. Now, that's not to say that this will stay that way and that Seattle won't finish the job and take the AL West, but the Astros are coming. They made up so much ground in such little time, and I just can't believe I wrote them off earlier this year. I'm not going to lie. I thought they were toast, but it looks like I might be wrong, and there's going to be a lot of people wrong out there as well. It's kind of wild, too, because I thought the Astros were going to be sellers at the deadline at the beginning of June. I heard that Kyle Tucker was possibly going to get traded if the Astros kept going on their downward trend because he's fixing to get paid, and he could get a haul at the deadline. But now it looks like they're going to maybe add at the deadline. And I've heard their GM saying that if they do add players, it's most likely going to be players with years of control left on their contract. So I have to imagine they're going to be in play for some starting pitching up at the deadline. One name that comes to mind is Garrett Crochet and maybe even Jack Flaherty. Well, Garrett Crochet has been the only bright spot of the Chicago White Sox, in my opinion. Crochet is having a fantastic first full season as a starting pitcher. And Jack Flaherty has been really, really good for the Detroit Tigers. It's so good to see a renaissance season from him. I mean, he has 115 strikeouts and only 89 innings pitch. He has a one flat whip, a 3-2-4 ERA. I did not see that coming. And I know the Astros don't have a great farm, but imagine they get one of those guys. That'd be a huge difference maker down the stretch of the season and in the postseason. And I know he's on the IL right now, but Justin Verlander is also probably going to be coming back at some point. Who knows what we'll see out of him when he comes back from the IL, but that's an arm the Astros are probably going to need down the stretch if they're going to make a push for the AL West and a playoff spot. Hopefully Hunter Brown and Spencer Arigetti keep making improvements to their game and keep giving Houston chances to win games down the stretch as well. And it also looks like their bullpen is starting to come around. Josh Hader's bounced back from his rough start of the season. Same thing with Ryan Presley and Brian Abreu. Taylor Scott has also been really, really good. What I'm really just trying to say here is that we all just made a big mistake about writing the Astros off in May. We should know better by now. It just seems like they always find a way no matter what to end up with a chance to make a deep playoff run. Now that's not guaranteed to still happen this year, but it's starting to look like it's possible. And if they somehow do make it to their eighth straight ALCS after everything that has happened to this team with injuries and poor performances, it doesn't seem like they'll ever miss the ALCS ever again. 